Hi everyone, it's Clara. I'm back again. Um, I'm here with my daughter. Um, she's going to help uh, me make this tutorial. It's, uh, somebody just asked me how we make our coffee dyed papers, uh, Sabrina and Benji on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I'm doing this for her. Uh, so yeah, and for you guys, if anyone is interested. And my daughter is going to tell you what we need to make this coffee dye paper. Okay, so we're going to need some uh, hot water. We didn't boil this, we just took it um, as hot as we can get it from the tap. You're also going to need some instant coffee, and you have to make sure that it's instant. If it's not, then the coffee won't dissolve into the water, and then your paper will be <laughs> grainy. And it will be a mess. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> and we just uh, use um, just normal coffee, nothing special. This is, what is this, Nestle? No, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's it's just instant German coffee. Brand. It's just instant coffee. You're also going to need a whisk. doesn't really matter what type of whisk um, you have. I prefer this one. Mm, of course, a tablespoon to measure your coffee. I usually measure the water using a mug. I think it's about 500 milliliters per mug. I'm going to make 50 sheets of coffee dyed paper. So um, that's two mugs that I use. And then for each mug, it's six tablespoons of coffee. So one mug, 500 milliliters to get really dark coffee dyed paper. So 500 milliliters of water and three heaped spoons of coffee. For 500 milliliters. No, six. 500? How many? How much you put in the one mug? Six tablespoons of coffee. Sorry, I'm wrong. So six tablespoons of coffee for one mug of water. Now this is the important bit, right? Yeah. What are you doing? So you're gonna wanna mix the coffee, and you see how you're getting all these bubbles. This is what's gonna um make the paper have the patterns mm -hmm. and stuff. The bubbly effect is not. Ooh, I have this nothing now. Times this is just baking paper, grease proof paper, normal grease proof paper. Dip the coffee in. We normally just dip one time, just one time, just like really quickly. And if you're doing this often, you might want to use some gloves because it does really. Yeah, you get stain. coffee stained uh, nails. See, that's really quick and just pile them on top of each other. Uh, just put about, let's say, um, five or six on top of each other. Otherwise, I don't know. It's just, just better that way. That's how we do it. And it's collecting the bubbles at the top. I think you need to mix it again. Is that six? That's enough. Yeah. Okay. And then you basically continue doing that until all the paper is done. After that, you I usually leave this overnight to dry, uh, about yeah, twelve hours or something like that. Um, after that, you have to um, iron each piece of paper. To completely dry it um you can't let these dry on top of each other until they're completely dry because they'll stick together and it just it doesn't work <laughs> also like that, that hard to them off again yeah <clears throat> so we don't use we don't oven dry these we just uh, leave them for a couple of hours they get uh, to a point where they're damp uh, we peel them off each other and then iron them completely dry and you get a uh, wonderful coffee dyed paper is that it? Where are the samples? We did show them the samples. Mm -hmm. So again, 
depending on how dark you want your coffee it depends on the ratio between water and coffee you can experiment with uh, what you know and get what color you like but the most important thing is um, what my daughter showed you that she discovered is to use the whisk and create the bubbles uh, and then you just yeah you just dip your coffee in one time and coffee your paper in the coffee one time and just wait for it to become damp and then iron it dry and that's the end of the process bye